Hello and welcome to this electrical principles training video. In this video we're going to continue considering the subject of SI units so if you haven't already done so then please click the link in the description below and download the SI units worksheet that goes along with this series of videos. So in this video we're going to define both power and energy, two units that are very closely related to each other but with a critical difference. We're also going to have a look at the difference between the unit of energy according to the SI system and also the unit of energy that is used more generally in the electrical industry. So a very important distinction to watch out for there. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to make sure that we get those key exam questions answered for you. Let's get started. So first of all, let's talk about the SI unit of power. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the worksheet first of all, we're going to get those units down so that we recognize them as we talk about them through the video. So when we talk about power for the mathematical symbol we use a capital P as you can see here. The unit that we measure power in is the Watt named after James Watt and the unit symbol that we use is a capital W. So there we've got P for the mathematical symbol capital P, we've got the Watt is the unit and the unit symbol is a capital W. Now the official definition for power is the rate of doing work or the rate of delivering energy. Now that's all well and good but it's very difficult to define power without defining energy and then it's very difficult to define energy without defining power. So in order to understand power we've got to think about it as how hard the electrical system is working at any given moment to create some kind of electrical effect. So for example you might have a uh, electric lamp, an LED lamp that maybe uses 7 watts of power and that 7 watts is an indication of how hard the electrical system has to work to deliver the amount of light and heat that that lamp is designed to give off in order to create the desired electrical effect. It needs 7 watts of power. You compare that with something like an immersion heater that may be running at 3 kilowatts which is 3000 watts you can see that the electrical system is going to have to work a lot harder to deliver that amount of power to the immersion heater than it is that LED lamp. Adding to this may be a motor that's running at 1.5 kilowatts and that's taking 1500 watts, 1500 watts in order to create a turning motion of a particular force. So it's a way of determining how much power, how hard the electrical system has to work in order to make something electrical operate. But the key thing to remember about power is that there is no time factor involved in it. So as soon as you turn on that 3 kilowatt immersion heater, that 3000 watt immersion heater that we mentioned earlier, for every kind of instant that it's on it's constantly dissipating 3000 watts of power, in that case in the form of heat. Uh, to go back to the example of the motor, the 1.5 kilowatt motor, when you turn that motor on it's constantly uh, dissipating 1500 watts of power in order to create that turning motion. Now understanding that helps us to understand energy a little bit differently because the key thing for this is understanding your electricity bill because the electricity board when they charge you for the amount of electricity that you use they're not really interested in how much power you're using they're interested in how long you've been using the power for. So let's say for example that you come in and you put on uh, that 3 kilowatt immersion heater that we spoke about earlier. That 3 kilowatt immersion heater if you've got that running for an hour then all of a sudden we've got a time factor involved. Obviously you're going to get charged more for an hour's use than you are half an hour's use or one minute's use. And that's where energy comes in. The electricity companies don't actually charge you for the power that you use, they charge you for the energy that you use because energy includes a time factor. So again let's bring up our worksheet and let's pop in the SI units, let's fill that in. So this is an interesting one actually. So the SI unit strictly speaking for energy is the joule. So the SI unit is the joule and to represent uh, energy we use a capital W. Now at first glance that might seem a little bit strange that we're using a capital W to represent energy but the reason for that is that there's also uh, energy can also be expressed as work done in a mechanical sense as well. So there's, there's kind of much more depth to this unit of the energy uh, than just uh, the electrical world. So we use the mathematical symbol capital W, we measure energy in joules according to the SI system and the unit symbol is a capital J. Now again this is kind of 
demonstrates for me how nice the SI system is and how logical it is. Because actually, the joule, so one joule of energy, is the same as one watt of power being used for a period of one second. So one watt of power being used for one second gives us one joule. So we could actually call this SI unit of energy, we could call it the watt second, but we don't, we give it a special name and we call it the joule, as you can see there. So hopefully we've got our worksheet filled in there, but there's a little bit more to this story than at first meets the eye. So we've said that the joule is the SI unit of energy, and we've also defined it as one watt being used for one second. Now, if we go back to uh, some of our examples that we mentioned earlier in the video, let's say you've got a seven watt electric lamp, uh, you're gonna have that turned on for more than one second. You might have it turned on for hours at a time. So you can see that very quickly, if we're gonna do uh, seven watts times by 60 seconds, if it's on for a minute, and then times by another 60, if it's on for an hour, and then maybe times that by five, if it's on for five hours, you can see that the number that we're developing there is getting very, very big if we measure it in joules. And that's just one tiny LED lamp. If we've got on that immersion heater that we spoke about earlier that's drawing three kilowatts, let's say we've got that switched on for an hour, you've got 3,000 watts times by 60 seconds times by 60 minutes. And again, you can see we're dealing with a big number there. And so because big numbers tend to frighten people, especially when they appear on your electricity bill, uh, what the electricity companies do is when they charge you for energy, they use a different unit. They use what's called the kilowatt hour. Now, at first glance, that doesn't seem to have anything to do with joules. But do you remember we said that the joule can actually be defined as the watt second, the amount of power that's being used for a given period of time. Well, in this case, we've turned the watts into kilowatts and we've turned the uh, seconds into hours. So what that does is it actually makes our numbers a little bit smaller. So let's just illustrate how useful this concept of the kilowatt hour is. Uh, we said earlier, if we, had, if we were to measure our electricity use in joules, we'd run into some problems. So let's start off from here. We've got, let's say we've got that three kilowatt immersion heater that we had earlier on. So that's 3000 watts. And then we're gonna times that by 60 for every minute that it's on. And if it's on for an hour, then we'll times it by another 60. And that's going to give us a number of 10,800,000 joules. Now, I don't know about you, but if that appeared on my electricity bill, 10,800 joules, that would give me a moment of panic. And that's just one immersion heater on for just one hour. You think about the amount of electricity that you use over a period of a month, and this number here on your electricity bill would be absolutely enormous and very difficult to work with, very difficult for us to understand, uh, perhaps uh, for normal consumers who aren't electricians to understand. So the electricity companies, instead of charging you for your energy in joules, they use the kilowatt hour, as we said. So let's change this into kilowatt hours instead. You've got one immersion heater on for, three hour, uh, for one hour. So that's three kilowatts multiplied. So remember three kilowatts is the same as 3000 watts. So that number and that number actually represent the same quantity. And then we're going to times that by the one hour that it's on for. So that's multiplied by one hour. So again, here, this actually represents one hour, doesn't it? 60 seconds times 60 minutes, it's the same as an hour. And there we've got, instead of having this huge big number here, we know now that we can be charged for three kilowatt hours for the electrical energy that we use. And actually the electricity board, they don't even really refer to kilowatt hours on most people's electricity bills. They refer to these as being units. So if you look on your electricity bill, you'll be charged so many pence per unit, maybe 14 pence or something like that. So that's what we're looking at. That's why the electricity companies use the kilowatt hour to measure energy instead of the joule. It gives you much easier, nicer, less scary numbers to work with. So in this video, we've seen the units for power and energy according to the SI system. So remember for power, we use the unit symbol capital P. We have uh, the unit of the watt and the unit symbol is a capital W. For energy, we use a capital W for the mathematical symbol. We measure it in uh, joules officially and the unit symbol is a capital J. However, in the electrical industry, we often work in kilowatt hours instead of joules. Uh, 
And actually, we can figure out what one kilowatt hour would be in joules. So we could say that one kilowatt hour is equal to 1,000 watts. So we've got one kilowatt, which is 1,000 watts, times by 60 times by 60, which is going to give us, uh, that's going to be 3,600,000. 3,600,000 joules. So those are effectively exactly the same amount of energy just expressed in different ways. Now that brings us nicely on to some exam questions that you may get. You may well get asked what is the SR unit for energy and the answer to that, the SR unit for energy is the joule. But you may also be asked what is energy commonly measured in within the electrical industry, in which case the answer would be the kilowatt hour. So just watch out for those, try and understand the difference between them. These are just different ways, the kilowatt hour and the joule are just different ways of measuring the same thing, different ways of measuring energy. So hopefully you've got your worksheet all filled in and all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.